Dr. Liu, I'd just like to ask, what are some strategies you can share to persuade long-time staff who are resistant to change and don't want to adopt to new tech or new ways of doing things in this post-COVID period? Okay, it starts even before you wanting to change. Uh, first of all, uh, you have to they have to uh, you have to start winning your rights to be followed. You have to win your rights. You have to earn your rights to uh, to uh, to be respected. You have to win your rights to be able to issue whatever changes you want. So in my company, for example, you know we have a better cry. We say we want to have the happiest people to work in our company. And what we do is that uh, we put aside budget, you know, and uh, we got our team together and said, we all agree that we want to be happy, we want to be well, you know, and we want to be wealthy. And to us, wealthy come from the root word, you know, the root word of wealthy, uh, wealth come from two uh, words called villa and ter. And villa means well-being, ter means condition. That means well means the condition of well-being. So to us, happiness is only one part of the overall wellness. So we are talking about physical wellness, emotional wellness, uh, uh, psychological wellness, social wellness, spiritual wellness, and wellness in every other aspects. So we sat down with everybody and say, shall we make this company the happiest company uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the world? You know, we never can get there. We don't know how to measure that. But we all agree that, you know, we want to be a very happy company. So even when we design our company, if you look at the GAX logo on the slide, if you look at the middle word, the E, you know, if uh, some of you who understand Chinese, if you just slant your head and you will know that the E is actually a Chinese character for heart, you know, so they say we want to build a company with a heart. We want to have a heart for each other. We want to have a heart for people. We want to be a happy company. And uh, so we have volunteers every quarterly to come together to uh, do whatever that can be done to make all of us happy and make all of us well. And then the next four months, and I grow a person, you know, also volunteer and try to do it better than the previous four months. So the interesting thing is this, in other companies, the boss have to think of how to make everybody well, everybody happy. You know, in my company, it is a bottom-up initiative, it is a peer-to-peer -peer initiative. You know, I decided with them that we all want to be happy and well, and they organize among themselves how to make each other well. And because of the fact that we, uh, we tell our people, we want to have a heart for you, we want you to be happy, we want you to be well, you know, and we sometimes take initiative to even look after the family. So it is easier for us to then cross the chasm when we want them to make changes, basically. So it is easy for us, you know, to, uh, to uh, determine what needs to be changed and why they need to change, basically. So it starts from earning the rights to be followed, earning the rights to lead, and then secondly is bringing the right people. So I call this a 6E function, enroll the right people, you know, create and vision, create the vision that you can share together, okay, and then educate them. So we spend time doing what we're doing right now. We have a lot of lunchtime training where we educate them on, on what are the changes in a new world and how they can adapt to a new world. Then we empower them. You know, we give them the, the, the latitude to sit down with us and say, what does it take for us to help you to become a better human, a better executive, a better leader, basically? Then encourage. How do you encourage them to continue to make the changes? You know, because changes is never easy. Not all changes are easy. Not all changes are comfortable. And then we continue to challenge each other to excel. So, first of all, exemplary. We set the example, as I mentioned to all of you. You set the example of what kind of organization you want it to be. Then we enroll the right people. And then we have shared vision, we envision and then shared values together. And then we educate them and we encourage them and we empower them. And then we excel together, basically. So it's not the boss telling them, you know, uh, that they need to be better. They need to be more productive because the boss is serving a partisan, partisan's uh, interest, a self-centered, uh, ethnocentric interest. But that together we can share this uh, values, together we share this interest, together we share this aspiration that by helping them to change, it's good for them, it's good for their team, it's good for the whole organization. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah, so over here we are a team, you know, so we, we help to make each other happy in, in this place. And uh, Daryl has a question asking, since we are bombarded constantly now with bad news, do you have a formula to be immune and look inward to move forward meaningfully? 
Okay, may I suggest uh, that you uh, you Google the word positive psychology? Uh, because uh, in 1998, Dr. Martin Seligman, who was the president of the American Psychological Association, challenged all the psychologists. For hundreds of years, they were helping people who are not so well to become well. He challenged them to help people who are well to become better than well. So in uh, since 1998, there's a whole growing body of knowledge supported by uh, rigorous evidence and research that teaches us how to become positive, how to become well, how to become optimistic, and how to be able to thrive in a new world, basically. So there are lots of information over there. But I want to suggest a few things that you can do. Uh, first thing is this. It starts with your own mind, your heart, and your mind. You know, it starts with what you want to be. You know, and uh, as I mentioned, in our company, we want our company to be a company of hearts. What do you really want to be? Who do you really want to be? You know, and then secondly, you know, to challenge yourself to count your blessing every day. You know, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, every morning when I read the newspaper, I flip through pages, I come to a column where there are many photographs staring at me, you know, with, with no uh, due respect to any one of them, you know, I tell myself, as long as my photograph is not staring back at me, I should have every reason to be happy. And the fact that you and I can have a webinar like this, we, be, we can be connected digitally, you have a roof above your head, you have friends around you. I think there's a lot to be grateful about. So learn to count your blessing, learn to uh, be grateful and thankful so, for so many good things around you. Learn to enjoy the beauty, the all and the wonders of uh, natural beauty about, of things around you that doesn't even cost money. You know, I love to look at clouds, I enjoy looking at trees, you know, I'll stop by and, and look at some interesting things that you'll find all over. It doesn't have to be a rose uh, because in my country, we don't see too many roses around. But if you open up your eyes, there are many little things that can make you very, very happy. And uh, then I want to bring in like-minded people who uh, share the same values and interests and aspirations as me. Uh, I have what you call mastermind group and we constantly encourage each other, constantly motivate each other, constantly inspire each other. You know, so I have a formula, I call it force feeding. Force feeding means I've got five senses. I force feed the inputs through these five senses with everything positive. So you'll find, for example, I have a book with me all the time. I tell myself, if I have to see anything, I want to see everything that's positive. If you want to hear anything, I make sure that I uh, hear things that are positive. If I want to eat anything, it must be positive, smell something that's positive, and feel something that's positive. So let me give you an example. You know, I don't tell myself to go to a food court to look for food. I determine exactly what I want to eat, you know, before I go to a food court or I get somebody to pick up the food for me. So by doing this, I make sure that whatever goes into my mouth has to be something positive, has to be something healthy. You know, so you are the garden of the five senses in your, in your system. Okay, force feed all the input with everything that's positive. So by being... By counting your, uh, your blessing, by being grateful and thankful, by force feeding all the inputs into your five senses with everything that's positive, everything that's optimistic, you put yourself in a better position you know, to strengthen your emotional well-being to respond to the challenges of the new world. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing, amazing. So we have another question from uh, uh, an attendee. Can you share some of your daily routines to continually grow and learn? Okay, in the morning uh, when I wake up, you know, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, before I open my eyes, you know, I start to count my blessing and then I do what is called a power walk. So in my power walk, I will, ex I will do deep breathing because I think we all don't breathe deep enough, you know, and uh, I do uh, stretching exercises and then in my walk, you know, I, uh, I pray, I count my blessing. I start to look for beauty, all and wonder all around me. And then I uh, start reminding myself of all my goals, my visions and my dreams. And then I think about what happened the day before, you know, what I've done right, what I've done wrong, how can I improve? Then I visualize what's going to happen throughout the day so that I'm mentally and, uh, and emotionally prepared, you know, for the activities that go on, to, uh, go on throughout the day, basically. And then the, after I've done that, I sit down and spend some time uh, reading the good book, meditating and praying uh, for my, uh, by myself, you know, and then the, I make sure that I've got a very healthy breakfast. Uh, to me, you know, the first meal of the day, or at least for all the meals of the day, has to be healthy, but I'm very, very particular that my first meal has to be super, super healthy, 
you know, before I start the new day, basically. So this is my daily morning routine.